Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So, first off, uh, please add yourself to the attendees list list on the um, um, on the agenda. And so we have a few uh, recurring calls that are that are on. So we have the NSM documents call. We have. Uh, on hiatus at the moment, we have a uh, we have a use case call, and also on and also on hiatus, we have a document call. So uh, we will resume those as uh, as necessary. We also participate in the CSF CNCF Telecom uh, user group, which occurs every first and third Monday um, at eight a.m. Pacific time. Um, the next call, I believe, should be this coming Monday. Uh, that one was canceled due to Labor Day. So the one after that will be on the on the third Monday. Um, does anyone here know whether or not that particular call is on uh, uh, is going to occur on? Uh, Asia time, or are we still going to do the uh, the 8 a.m. Pacific time? The call on the third Monday in September, September 16th, will be the first um, Asia time call. So instead of being 8 a.m. Pacific time, it'll actually be 4 a.m. Pacific time. So... So, so in that scenario, uh, 4 a.m. Pacific time for uh, September 16th. All right, so we have a few uh, major events coming up. We have ONS Europe in Antwerp, where we have four talks accepted. There is a telecom user group meetup and the CNF test bed tutorial. We have the open source um, summit coming up which um, we had a talk accepted um, on, by, on the introduction of NSM by Ivana and Radoslav. We have KubeCon and CloudNativeCon coming up. Um, call for proposals is still, is, is still being decided upon. Uh, we have, but we do have NSMCon. And so uh, we definitely request everyone here join us at NSMCon. Uh, if you'll, if you'll be in the area. And simultaneously, we're also looking for, uh, for proposals for, for talks at the, uh, at the NSM con as well. So if you have something you would, you would love to talk about that is NSM related, um, definitely, definitely bring it up here. We also, we also have a Kubernetes forum, which is going to occur in Seoul and Sydney. Uh, so, if anyone would like to, if anyone would like to talk at either one of them, uh, the call the call for proposal closes on Friday, September six. Um, so, Lucina, you have the uh, you have the floor. Hi, thanks. Still making good progress. Um, increasing across the board on the N Service Mesh Twitter account. Since last week, 17 more followers. And followed 15 more accounts and tweeted and retweeted 25 times. This week, um, to follow up from last week, the VMware Open Source Teams Part 2 of mess of mess meshes, um, breaking down service mesh ecosystem, including network service mesh, was reposted from 168 different accounts on Twitter. And that's kind of slowed down, but last Tuesday through, I think last Thursday, 168 reposts of that blog post. So congratulations, Nikolai, for your successful post. Thank People you. really liked it. Um, I reposted it twice <laughs> from our account. 
<laughs> I could have reposted it 168 times, but that would be spammy. So I just posted it twice. And I also posted a reminder of today's working group, the call for sponsors for Network Service Mesh Con at KubeCon North America. And I pinned a new tweet for Network Service Mesh Con onto the top of the Twitter profile page. And this week's plan, I'll send a 24-hour reminder for our bi-weekly Network Service Mesh call on Tuesday, the September 3rd, the earlier time. I'll continue announcing the Open Networking Summit, Open Source Summit, and KubeCon talks as well as searching for any mentions and reposting. I'll announce the next release when available. And I did have some questions uh, this week and Service Mesh was tagged in a post. And I read through their GitHub repo to see if they had forked or mentioned Network Service Mesh as they tagged and thanked Network Service Mesh in their product release. But before um, taking any action, I wanted to confirm uh, that they are in fact an end user. And if so, that would be awesome. I was just a little bit confused how network service mesh fit into this product release. I think it's, it's a, it's a error. Like, uh, it probably has nothing to do with what we do. Oh, nuts. <laughs> wireless mesh that they're developing. I don't know why NS and service mesh makes sense for them. I think. Very good. That was my hunch as well, that it didn't quite add up. Well, we got a free mention. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was wondering about other shareable milestones as well. We were recently tagged in a post from, I believe it was Meshery, and they were like, if you like Linkerd and Istio and Envoy Proxy and Network Service Mesh, then give us a star because they were looking for more stars on their GitHub repo to be included in the <clears throat> CNCF landscape. I believe that non-CNCF hosted projects must have 300 stars on their GitHub repo in order to qualify to be displayed. And so they were looking for more stars. And that just led a question. We have 254 stars on our repo. Do we have any goals to reach any number of stars by any certain day? If so, I can request otherwise. May not request. Well, yeah, that's it. Uh, you go ahead, Nikolai. No, I was looking at what linker these stars are. I mean, what number of stars do they have? And it's 5,000. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's going to be one of the interesting things about it because um, in the long run, I, I suspect that NSM is going to be more like, uh, uh, I guess you would say like the, the thing that helps things run, but not necessarily the thing on the front. And so like, like in a, if you go see a concert, everyone, uh, everyone always cheers for the, the lead front guy, but they never look at the sound guy behind them who makes the sound sound really great. And so, you know, it takes a whole team in order to make it uh, in order to make it work. So I think um, uh, we we could aim for for increasing the number of stars, and I, I do think that that is going to be a, a good idea um, in in the long run. Uh, but it it definitely hasn't been a priority up to uh, up to now. Uh, but we should definitely consider it because uh, increasing the number of stars does inc increase when people look at GitHub. It does, and they look at like. What projects should I look at? It does help increase um, that aspect, and uh, as as noisy as a as a metric it is, people sometimes will look at stars to try to work out it. Is this a real project or not? So it it may make sense to to make to do a star drive in in the long run. Okay, sounds good. Maybe I'll postpone that until the next release. Uh, and maybe once we have more end users or more, more folks, including them, including network service mesh with their project, then I'll request, are you using network service mesh for your project? Give us a star. <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. And just uh, that uh, the, we want to, we want to be at a point where like right now you, you can download and you can run an uh, NSM. Um, 
the steps to do it are are still non are are still not as trivial as we as we want, but uh, we're we're getting down to the point where you could run Helm install and it just it just installs it, um, and so a little bit more work. Uh, and uh, Nick, I can talk to this, uh, like, but once we're like once we're getting close to uh, a release candidate or production, and we get people to to start uh, to start playing around with it, then I think that'd be the perfect time. Uh, and that way, the people when their first interaction with it is uh, if they decide to try it, is hey, this is cool, rather than uh, hey, this looks cool but doesn't doesn't work. Uh, and and so so once we're once we're close to production, I, I think that'd be a fantastic time to do that. Awesome! Thank you so much for the feedback. Cool. Thank you for bringing it up. Absolutely. Are there any other shareable milestones? Um, we've got stars waiting on hold. We've got um, the one thousand commits, which we had passed. So next will be two thousand commits. Um, we're almost to 400 followers on Twitter. I think we need fewer than 10. Are there any other milestones that you'd like to try to reach? Or share once we do reach. Yeah. Well, I think that we mentioned uh, whatever is important, is, is at least from my point of view. I mean, the, the the next immediate things that are that are coming are all these you know, events that that we are preparing for, and uh, of course the race. So other than that, I think no. So yeah, I think um, I think in the the same. Uh, the same milestone or the same thing at this point as well. Um, there's not, nothing additional to, to add in. You, you've, you've been no, doing a really great job on keeping track of the existing stuff. So, um, so I think we're good. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thank you so much. I'll keep on keeping on and that concludes my update. Well, um, so Ed is not here today because he's, um, not feeling particularly well, so he's taking a short break. Uh, but I, what I think we can do as well is, uh, depending on who we have on the call, uh, we can we can ask for a few updates. And so um, <clears throat> I'll ask for. Uh, so the first thing is, uh, Circle CI has had some some instability. Do we have anyone here who has been focusing on Circle CI in order to uh, in order to increase the stability? Yeah, uh, we're working on our on XORD side. Uh, found few issues already, requests uh, in on a GitHub. So I hope we will resolve in a few days. Yeah, but these are mostly just just glitches in our testing, not, not directly related to circles. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's mostly testing glitches. Mm -hmm. Some tests uh, leave some artifacts, namespaces, and so on. So. We're adding some testing stuff to improve. Yeah, we have merged some amazing features lately. So, of course, there are regressions here and there, but yeah, it will be fixed, I believe. Cool. Um, so, in terms of uh, stuff that's in progress, uh, do we have any uh, any recent updates on uh, on DNS? So I saw PR um, PR fourteen nineteen has uh, been merged, which is the sidecar container. Yeah. Mm. Denise? Denise is here. Sure. Uh, yes. Hello. Uh, by my side, I've provided uh, third part of uh, Denise. It's a uh, final part, uh, and PR is provided. But I have a red build and uh, I'll make it ready for review as soon as uh, I can. <laughs> uh, that's all. Fantastic, thank you. And so on the uh, security aspect, so we're looking at 
uh, bringing in Spiffy and Spire. Uh, so for those who are unfamiliar with Spiffy and, and Spire, so Spiffy is a specification of how to establish identity of, uh, of workloads. Inspire is a implementation of that. Uh, if you have used Istio to do workload identity, you are using uh, Spiffy, but you're, you use Citadel instead of Spire in that scenario. Uh, the reason for using Spire is that Spire works without uh, without Istio. So Citadel is designed to work specifically only in only in Istio and is tightly integrated. So. In terms of uh, what we're looking to do is we're looking to use Spiffy to, to try to work out exactly who is the workload on the other side. Uh, so you can think of it as establishing, prov like establishing providence, uh, establishing a connection. Uh, we can use, because you get uh, uh, tokens on each side that are cryptographically verifiable, you can check to see you know, who, who is the next person in the chain and simultaneously, you can also check uh, as each of the tokens gets populated as you connect through your chain, you can look at the list of tokens and work out, do I trust everyone in the, in the chain or do I not trust everyone in the chain? So uh, from a security perspective, this, uh, it's not the only thing we need to do, but, it's, but this certainly is a, a excellent first uh, building block. So uh, with that, we have the security spec, uh, is is there uh, anyone here who is uh, who is working on that? Uh, unfortunately, Ilya is on location for this week, and he is main maintainer for this feature. Uh, so, as I remember, uh, pull request is mostly ready for review, uh, but I think we we'll already have some comments for it. So let's wait for Ilya uh, to finish his work. Cool, no problem. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, this is definitely one of the ones. I mean, I'm excited about all of them, but this is definitely one of the uh, one of the ones that um, I'm able to use to uh, to demonstrate uh, to demonstrate NSM. So it's 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 one of the ones that's uh, that's commonly looked at. Um, do we have anyone on on interdomain? Uh, seems no. Tom is not not here. Yeah, but it was merged already. So yeah, it's merged, uh, but uh, there's few issues uh, related to stability uh, in interdomain testing. Mm -hmm. So last most of the last failures caused by interdomains stabilities. Yeah. I yeah. was checking the testing today that we have uh, for the interview main, and uh, it looks very interesting. I'm actually uh, inclined to somehow have some example uh, in the in the other repo and examples repo where we can demonstrate this with uh, I don't know two kind deployments or something like that. But yeah, I have to figure it out. I mean. We, we never designed for multi-cluster <laughs> uh, when we started with the example, so I don't know, so this will take some refactoring of the infrastructure there. In any case, it's a super cool feature. Cool, and um, yeah, PR 1298 is the last PR for the initial interdomain work, and that has been um, that has been merged. Mm -hmm. yes. So we have work on increased pluggability, uh, where NS, we're, we're breaking out uh, NSM manager into pieces, uh, such as excluding uh, prefix de uh, detection. Uh, is is anyone able to talk about that? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, we'll talk a bit. Uh, we have merged a few of the pull requests. And few is uh, uh, some in some progress, and uh, I think Denise, uh, who's working on DNS, uh, started to work over them, and we'll provide some updates in few days, I suppose. Uh, so in general, idea is to uh, 
have uh, plugins to be able to do all kind of uh, cluster specific stuff. Uh, at the moment, uh, plugins support exclude prefixes and upcoming stuff is uh, will provide support uh, for uh, finding endpoints and uh, some parts of interdomain implementation will be also implemented as a plugins. Uh, this will give more abilities to have stable uh, NS manager and few plugins to give additional capabilities like interdomain and so on. Nice. So I assume that'll probably be an ongoing thing it's where even once we get the uh, plugin design there, um, as we learn what needs to be built, then we can add more plugins. Yeah. So we have um, SRV6 support. Um, do we have anyone who's able to, to talk about that? Uh, it's also Artyom, he, he's not here. Uh, as I know, he's already have a service support between uh, local clusters and most of the tests are stable. And right now he's working to add support of a uh, service six between interdomains. And I hope it will be merged and uh, not merged, but pull request will be ready in a few days. Uh, so you'll be able to review. Uh, for service six supports. Also for service six, we have few issues uh, on the VPP agent side. Uh, in case of uh, highly uh, healing tests, so just establishing of a service six connection is fine on a VPP agent. But if we do some updates or deleting or do trying to do healing, uh, a service six is not fully uh, working uh, in a VPP agent because of the errors inside the VPP agent. Okay, so waiting for some response from VPP agent guys. Okay, that makes sense. And so we're, we're effectively blocked on, uh, blocked on them. Yeah. So we have the uh, NS, NSM forwarding from NSM manager. Uh, so we don't have any links to any uh, to anything on that for spec yet. Uh, is anyone able to talk about that? I think we need to wait for Ed for a bit. Uh, he created a few issues related to this uh, in uh, GitHub, uh, but it's not fully. Cool. And um, uh, kernel forwarding plane. So uh, is, is anyone able to discuss that? <clears throat> so yes, uh, whatever we have uh, was merged already. Uh, I know that Rauslav is working on uh, adding uh, metrics support. Um, and uh, we have been discussing with that uh, about the next steps. I know that uh, Andre that some people from uh, from your team is going to also join this effort uh, to um, update network service manager uh, yeah network service manager uh, in the data plane selection uh, to, to have a better support for multiple data planes because today it's a bit um, opportunistic like whatever you find first you just select it and call yeah 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 that's uh, nice. pretty, uh, pretty simple <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, depending on the order that they are uh, registered, you can get uh, different uh, essentially scenarios. Uh, but I mean, it works uh, for whatever it was designed. Uh, we had to move forward, and um, I know that there had been some discussions uh, around this uh, with some people from your team. So. <clears throat> We have to, to to figure out a spec and uh, more more concrete uh, implementation in mind and uh, and move forward. That's uh, that's it. Yeah. So one of the nice things on this as well is uh, it definitely helps us work out um, if any VPPisms have crept into the uh, into the code base. So definitely definitely looking forward to that. Um, this 
has also um, helps me out in a couple other efforts because um, I'm looking at uh, I'm currently engaging a couple other companies who who have data planes and uh, it's making sure that this that this uh, effort is uh, smooth is uh, critical to to engaging them. Um, we have uh, refactoring to to simplify um, NSM or as well or latency and returns to the SDK. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, in a few words, uh, it transferred this work to me. Uh, so uh, at the moment we have a pull request uh, which will uh, reverse logic in the SDK when we define a chain of components. Uh, I'm working. Uh, to stabilize it uh, and fix link linting issues. Uh, during this work, I've uh, found few issues with the open tracing. It will be a separate pull request, and uh, found a very a bit of weird issue with our uh, VPP uh, example. In case of yours, uh, it uh, fall into uh, infinite recursion and uh, step by timeout. Uh, so it also will be a separate pull request for uh, a bit of fixes for this. So I think it, in a few days it will be ready, including the examples repo changes. So mostly. Also, uh, in separate pull request, uh, open tracing will be uh, much improved uh, and it will be possible to look for all chain of uh, operations performed, uh, starting from client to the all of the endpoints we go across. So why we, we, we are here, Andre, I remember that last week you reported that there was a um, issue with the DLV debugger after uh, we- It's still, still an issue, actually. Still not, issue. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of the dependencies uh, in master uh, break uh, the formatting package uh, in a debugger. Uh, not sure why. So <laughs> go and uh, stop it to debug our tests and some of the operations. Okay, is there an issue with the DOV? Is there something that uh, I don't know, we can demonstrate? Uh, yeah, we will try, but uh, we still uh, not able to reproduce it on a small example, so we can show it. Huh, really? That's, that's yeah. interesting. It's it's not work for, with us, but it work if you just have trying to replicate it with a, just a small uh, Go file. That's a very, uh, weird, weird stuff is always so weird. <laughs> could it be something related to Jaeger? The fact that we have reused Jaeger all over the place? So. Uh, no, 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 no. Seems like uh, it's related to some formatting libraries uh, somehow rewrite it in our uh, Go mode uh, in case of NSM. So uh, Artyom is uh, trying to figure out how to fix it, uh, but he's not very fast today. Okay. I have no details. Okay. Okay, I guess that we covered all, or is there something else? Maybe this linearizing local remote calls and some simplification and create. <clears throat> is there something about this that we want to say? What's, uh... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's exactly forwarding stuff uh, it created. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a more complex thing that needs some more reading than than talking. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, also it most probably will be doable after we will uh, move the entire NSM to SDK like approach. Yeah. So yeah. having chains of uh, uh, or doing requests. Yeah. So yeah, this the will be the next step after SDK refactoring. 
Great. Actually, actually, I I like where where all these things are, are going. This whole refactoring effort that was actually initiated by Ed, from what I know. Uh, but um, following uh, the same uh, development uh, pattern uh, all over the code is uh, actually a good thing, I believe. Yeah. Also, as I know, uh, we should have an issue, uh, and uh, we will start it. Uh, in your future to move a uh, page in the plane to be used it on VSDK. Uh, so most of the components will uh, follow VSDK approach to having a chain of uh, operations we need to perform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, um, for those who are unfamiliar with this, uh, one of the nice side effects of this patch is that it simplifies the path for adding multiple data planes. So if you want, uh, access to a special NIC card, or you have uh, maybe you're using uh, uh, VPP for certain certain ac actions, but you want to use something uh, something else uh, uh, for performing a different action based upon their needs. Then uh, this this helps out tremendously because you know, it gets rewritten on the fly to the to the correct uh, order. So, so this definitely uh, this definitely helps out tremendously in that space. Um, so we have specs for uh, specs are currently up for review as well. Um, so the do we so what, what do we want, want to do in this scenario? Do we uh, do we want to talk about the specs, or do, should we uh, should we just tell people where where to go to to see them? Uh. Yeah, so we essentially have this project board, which is called specification, and uh, the major specs that are that we are considering are sitting here. Uh, I don't know if we have any any others that are not here. No. Um, I don't know if we need to, to open them one by one. I think that probably is a bit redundant, but um, if there's any ones, any, any, any specific one that we can call out. Um, so for example, I would really would like to, uh, to talk a little bit about this one. <clears throat> so I don't know if someone from yeah, I see that uh, Watson is here. Hello, Watson. Uh, so uh, within the uh, CNF test bed, um, so I'm working with uh, Taylor and uh, Michael from uh, Taylor from Vogue and Michael from Intel uh, on enabling NSM there. We already have a simple example, and now we reached a point where we would like to be able to <clears throat> Send and receive packet from the outside world, from the non-NSM world, and that's where we are talking about this ingress and egress gateways and whatever you want to call them. And uh, there has been a bit interesting discussion the other day where we were trying to figure out what is the best um, cloud-native approach <coughs> to this. And uh, there has been different discussions about what actually falls into the NSM domain. Uh, should NSM be able to manage the hardware resources, the underlying network to some extent at some point? Should we be able to actually expose <clears throat> the, the, the networking resources, the high-speed network, for example, you have some 50 gig network or 100 gig network, and you expose it as a service, and then you consume, consume it this way? <clears throat> so various various discussions there, but uh, one of the ideas that Matt uh, actually from Orange I started this a couple of months ago uh, was this um, ingress gateway i know that he's working i don't think that he's on the call today uh, matt are you here no <clears throat> but we would very much uh, appreciate any any ideas around this and uh, um, we have done a lot of work to actually improve nsm on its own but uh, I think that we have already also reached a point where we, we would like to connect to, to, to the outside world. Uh, and 
you probably have to go through some iterations or even even provide a couple of solutions to this problem. Uh, for the time being, with the uh, CNF test bed, we are going with uh, somehow semi-static manual uh, device assignment for the gateway. So we deploy the <coughs> a VPP based uh, CNF, and we will statically assign a PCI device to it so that it can exit the the worker node uh, and talk to a packet uh, generator. Uh, but that's um, yeah, that's not, not not good. Not not where we want to stop. We want to be to reach a point where the gateway can be expressed in a cloud native way, uh, or the networking or the high speed networking is just a network service that you can subscribe for and uh, get a connectivity to it. So, uh, interesting discussions around this. So, if uh, if anyone has uh, anything to add to this, please check this uh, this spec uh, and provide input feedback patches. Okay, that's what I wanted to call out. If there's anything else, we can also make sure. Nice and. Um... And just as a heads up, I'm starting to write the spec on CNI interoperability, uh, which I think will be of interest to many. Uh, I haven't put down the, uh, the concepts there uh, fully just yet because I'm, I'm still thinking through a lot of them. Uh, and there's a couple approaches that, I, that I've uh, thought up of. Uh, the one that I think is the most promising uh, is I was thinking of when when we want to uh, when we want to gain uh, interoperability with NSM, what we can do is we leave the CNI as it is. Uh, but what we can do is once the interface has been created, CNI as a process exits, and so that gives us the uh, that gives us the uh, interface that's there. So what I'm thinking of is we can migrate that interface to a new network namespace and uh, have NSM create a proxy interface that, uh, that links to it. But in order to register that, uh, that namespace, uh, I was looking at the, uh, the local linearization uh, patches because what we may be able to do is inject a new data plane that is uh, valid only, only for that specific request so that when you make the, the call in, it has a registered uh, CNI namespace that's there, and it would only move things on on demand. Uh, there's some things that we have to think through in uh, terms of making in terms of making this work because this has implications on on uh, IP table rules. Uh, uh, I think it may end up working out okay because the IP tables will still be there; they'll still interact on on that specific interface, uh, and so. But uh, we we should still be we should still be careful with it in terms of how in terms of how it works. Um, there's a couple other simpler ideas that have popped up as well, but uh, I think that one may be may be the simplest. And so the the goal at the end of the day is to be able to interact with an existing CNI and to be able to interpose NSM between the uh, the network namespace and the actual CNI SDN in such a way that we can inject network services in the in the middle. So if you want to bring in an intrusion detection system that works with that pod, or you want to bring in a uh, you want to bring in a more powerful uh, firewall other than other than IP tables or or so on, uh, and bring them in the CNFs, it, give, it gives you a another path to to doing so. So uh, just some just some thoughts that uh, that that are that are there. Um, Anyways, uh, I'll have I'll have a few paths um, that'll be uh, that I'll write up in the next uh, week or so um, of different possible approaches, and I'm going to ask people for help with reviewing this in in more detail because this is something that there's going to be a lot of edge cases on, and I actually don't think we'll be able to solve all the edge cases in the first pass. Uh, but we want people to be aware of what they are, because that gives us the limits as to as to where we can where we can use it and um, and uh, what the caveats are when you when you do use it. So, 
But uh, yeah, I think this this has the potential to be to be really to be really powerful. Uh, are there any questions on that one? Yeah, I mean, I I would prefer to see some uh, some more concrete writing and uh, maybe even pictures. <laughs> So yeah, but uh, yeah, it sounds 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 really interesting, and I'm I'm sure that that it will spawn a lot of interest. And um, as we said a lot of times, maybe it brings us closer to uh, make NSM one potential help, so, like one potential solution to uh, the Kubernetes uh, multi um, multi tenancy. Yeah, so I think um, I think this one definitely has a uh, has some interesting uh, has some interesting aspects. But I'll I'll call out some of the use cases as well in the document. Um, I think that'd be a good uh, I think that'd be a good idea. Um, Do you have any specific CNI that you want to play with, like some simple one or? I. What I'm going to aim for is uh, is we pick a couple of the the most commonly used uh, CNIs to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we can pick things like let's let's see let's make it work for Calico uh, and and Flannel, uh, and so we we can start with uh, you know start simple, but then we we can build up from you know, we can build up from there over time. Okay, and so I think. I think between calico, calico and uh, and flannel, that should cover maybe ninety ninety five percent of all deployments out there. <laughs> probably, probably. And calico taking up ninety percent of that. <laughs> and so, yeah. And and so even if we just focus on calico as the first one, I think I think we'll be in in good shape. Um. I'm not sure if calico would be the the easier one, but yeah probably will be the, the most influential as you said so yeah it's it's the necessary one <laughs> um with that i don't have anything i don't have anything else and we've run up to to the end of the agenda is there anything else that anyone wants to discuss i'd like to talk about so it's a new fixing agent. Uh, I, I've opened it, it's a fixing file. Uh, if anyone, just to raise it, if anyone uh, has an opinion or struggled with this, it's about not, uh, the FP agent is not sending statistics. And, uh, I, I can be, so there are no metrics in the cross-connect monitor. And I'm currently investigating it. Any opinion like this? Does it remember uh, for VPP? Uh, yeah, it's the data plane. Uh, yeah, uh, implemented server. metrics for cross uh, I didn't add comment for the VPP agent, but I can add my latest investigations. I've compared with the metrics test where. Uh, uh, there is no VPP uh, in the communication and uh, for the metrics test, and it's working okay there. And I looked into the code, so it seems maybe it's a problem with the VPP itself. I've been looking for some issues. Or but if anyone is familiar, any opinion, this is fine. I'm not sure. Probably some someone need to check. Uh, I don't remember exactly who was implementing the metrics support. Uh, if we ch we will check if it's on Xorid site. Uh, this work was done. We will check. Uh, I don't remember. 
for the matrix uh, work for the SMI integration, I'm currently working on adding the pod names to the cross connect so that uh, we can have uh, the information there for, for, for the queries for the matrix so we can uh, search matrix for specific pods. Uh, and I'm collaborating with Radoslav to bring the kernel matrix so we can test with the kernel forwarder, but it's uh, good to uh, find a fix for the deep so that we can integrate the pods. Okay, if, the, if there's no, no resolution on this till next week, we can bring it again. And I don't know if Ed is here, maybe he can suggest uh, who we can contact on the VPP agent side from Ligato, uh, if we need help still. Yeah, it might, it might make sense to reach out to, um, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the fellow who was there. Was it, uh, was it An Andre? Uh, yeah. One of, yeah. Was we think the, yeah, if um, it maybe it may make sense if uh, if if it looks like it's a problem with VPP agent and it's not a problem with VPP, it may make sense to to ask him about it. Um, Lisa, that's who that's how who I would think about it. Um, let's see if I can get the the name. Yeah, on uh, Andre Fabry. Uh, I probably said the name poorly. Would be and, and at the very minimum, he would know who to contact um, in in that scenario. So, we, okay. So I'll put the name in the. Uh, So I don't know the best way to get a hold of them, um, but uh, we 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 can work that out. I guess creating an issue in the uh, issue tracker on GitHub and referring to our fifteen twelve should be should be good enough. Yeah. Do we do we have any uh, anything that's reproducible for them that, that we can send that we can add into the into the ticket? I can add information. Uh, I have several times locally and kept logs. So Sorry, the uh, the the audio is fading out a little bit. Uh, with volume. Oh, sorry, do you hear me? Uh, yeah, I have logs uh, about that and. The issue, or maybe uh, share them. Yeah, I yeah definitely go ahead and create the uh, the issue with them and um, fill in as much information as uh, as you can. And if it's if it's not the right place, they'll they'll tell us though as well. Sure, no problem. Um, with that, um, is there anything else we want to bring up? Nope. Fantastic. Well, with that, um, one, uh, do, do a, couple, a couple last reminders, NSM call for proposals and Number two, if you're considering sponsoring uh, NSMCon, the uh, the link is on the website in the events uh, in the events section. So uh, and so with that, I want to thank everyone for your time, and we will see you all again next week at the same time. You all have a good day. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye. Cheers.